Um, would, can I, can I, would, you, would, you, would you like to ask a question? So I'll take you in groups of three if anybody wants to ask a question or make a comment. One. Is anybody else while we're at it? Anybody else want to say something? Two. Okay. One, two. Yes, thank you. Um, okay. I'd just like to know, when is the election planned and what political parties are actually going to take place to participate in it? Um, the reason that's been given for having the election is that the regime wants to acquire some sort of legitimacy. Um, what process will there be in the election which is likely to give them that legitimacy? In other words, will there be any external monitoring of the election <coughs> and so on? And, uh, to, and, and who is going to um, who's going to give them the legitimacy? Because I don't think we will, uh, or the people here, but apparently they think someone will. I'll say a couple of things about that. Um, uh, the, a lot of people were expecting the election to be held this May, but that can't be the case because the registration process means that uh, a new party has to take 90 days to register, so that knocked out 90. Um, I think one of the reasons which is not talked about very often about why these elections are being held, they are window dressing, obviously. Um, the, the chance of them being um, fair and open, even though the electoral law, election law, it says that they shall be free and they won't be because uh, the regime will not risk, will not take any risk of repeating what happened in 1990 when the NLB won. Um, I think that there has been kind of pressure from ASEAN, and ASEAN is incredibly important. Uh, the um, belonging to ASEAN means a great deal to to the regime because that does give them a kind of legitimacy, it gives them a membership of um, a rather well-respected organisation. It also uh, gives them a buffer against China. Although we all agreed, I think that uh, that for, for you know either because of proximity or because of sanctions, that, that Burma has been held into the Chinese clutch. I don't think the, the, the generals enjoy uh, being beholden to China than to um, anyone else. I mean, their, their psychology is precisely that they will not be beholden to anybody at all, including uh, an elected party like the NLD and Aung San Suu Kyi. I wanted to pick up on one thing earlier. I, mean, I think Aung San Suu Kyi uh, is obviously in the hearts of the Burmese people always will be. I think that is her incredible achievement, which is the first time in Burmese history there's a Burmese um, iconic figure, a hero, heroine, or what you like, who's not a military, who's not a warrior, who's not a, 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 a warrior king. And that's going to last. And it'll last beyond the death of it will last beyond the death of every person in this room and the child of every death in this room. That's an incredible achievement. We should never take that away from that. That said, the regime has been extraordinarily effective in containing her uh, and NLD about the election to fill in the question. Uh, what the, um, uh, in order for a party to participate in, in the election, it has to sign up to the um, 2008 constitution. The whole raison d'etre of the uh, Aung San Suu Kyi and the NLD is what happened between 1988 and 1990. Aung San Suu Kyi, the last couple of days, through her lawyer, has said uh, that she does not want the NLD um, to participate in the election, probably for those reasons I just said, which would have been uh, you know, having to abandon the birthright, basically. There are, however, other people in the NLD, and you might say something about this, particularly some gentleman called King Mark Sweat, who is quite senior within, within the NLD, who are taking a, a very pragmatic view and saying, uh, we should participate so that we still have a stake in what happens. Finally, on the business of civilianization, I kind of agreed with what Zani said. I said it was a very small hope. I think because, going back to the ASEAN thing, that because um, of Burma's membership uh, of ASEAN, uh, I think that a civilianization process could turn out different from the, the earlier civilization uh, in, in, in 1960s. It's a long hope, but we've most got hope, hope for something. Um, in terms of um, you know what should be considered a politically pragmatic 
um, in, in, in the context of the emerging uh, electoral politics. I, I think um, a, a lot of people have framed, um, incidentally, I'm, I am probably the harshest um, Burmese dissident critic of Aung San Suu Kyi and her um, uh, continued support for uh, prolonged sanctions. However, um, you know, at a um, crucial moment, um, such as uh, the one that we are entering, I close rank. And uh, I'm not speaking as a, a you know, dispassionate, uh, objective uh, academic at all. You know, because after all, this is my country and I am politically involved. And that's, you know, that, I, I need to make that very clear. And uh, you know, I care very deeply about this country. And also, if things don't change, I will not see my mother. And uh, uh, you know, uh, she's in her 70s. I didn't see my father when he died 10 years ago, and you know, that Suchi will call that an occupational hazard, and I don't, I made the choice and I don't blame anybody. Uh, but what I want to say here is, um, if the 2008 constitution was drafted with the intent of, you know, um, killing Aung San Suu Kyi as a political force, and uh, you know, undermining the NLD Ha Party as a mass-based um, um, party, then I think, Suu Kyi and her colleagues, who have publicly come up and said they would not even think about registering their party you know, under the, uh, such draconian laws, I think that is a pragmatic choice. Because pragmatism means self-preservation. They need to preserve themselves. You know, they do not need legality that is to be bestowed upon them by the regime that is itself uh, illegitimate in the eyes of the international community, and that is lacking legitimacy, even if it's, that legitimacy is defined uh, uh, domestically and in, in the traditional way. And so I think uh, NLD, um, just one example uh, is that, you know, when I'm not, I was never a communist, I was sympathetic to the, uh, the values of egalitarian um, you know, uh, visions, but, the Communist Party, three months after Burmese independence in 1948, went underground and they did not register with either the, uh, you know, uh, the Burmese uh, civilian government or the military government. And they fought on. And interestingly, they lasted one year more than the uh, Nguyen Socialist Party as an uh, underground movement. And that's the model that NLD is looking at. They are going underground. And it came on to that uh, um, Justin mentioned, um, does not have the, the social standing or political uh, force that Suji and her uh, colleagues do. Uh, 